Got some other interesting properties we're going to look at. We're joined now by property expert Louisa Fletcher. Good to see you this morning. Good morning. No doubt people are going to say there are some crazy prices in the capital. But let's have a look at a few more because these are really extraordinary. This is an alleyway that was recently sold in uh, South London. Uh, it was sold for a quarter of a million pounds which is extraordinary. Just the alleyway between that coffee shop and that charity And they're going to convert that. It's, it's got, got planning, planning permission. permission. Yeah. So but someone just will be living there. Uh, <laughs> there's another one. This is, the, this is the tiniest home. 188 square foot. This is smaller, I think, than uh, this similar size to the one is that, that Rambush talked about. On top of the 275,000 pounds. Oh, That's that actually is. so you walk up the so kitchen up, units. And is that the bed above? Yes. Yeah, because it's literally yeah. one room. Amazing. And then the garage in Knightsbridge, 400,000 pounds for a garage in Knightsbridge. Uh, Louisa, it's an extraordinary thing. So we, we always know that London is a kind of market to itself in the yes. South East, but it is positive news for the rest of the country, isn't it? It is. If we look at the top 20 cities that have experienced this growth as seen by the Home Track report, it's quite obvious that things are going the right way in those areas. But it's a double-edged sword because obviously it's going to make it more difficult for first-time buyers to mm. get on the market and people to move up the ladder. So it's, ob it's obviously good to take it in a, in a balanced picture. And how long is it likely to last then? Is this something that could be a bubble and then it could go away again or is it set to continue? Well, uh, markets are fueled by sentiment and let's think about what's going to happen in the next six months. We've got a general election and obviously there's uncertainty around those kinds of things. What's going to happen? Who's going to get in? We also need to think about the interest rate. So it's at a historic low of half a percent and that's the lowest it's ever been for 200 years. So interest rates are only going to go one way and, and that's up. And um, we already know that Mark Carney is, is dovish about the interest rate, but it's likely to happen after the election. Mm. We've obviously had a statement from the Prime Minister last week talking about the fact that the dashboard lights are, are flashing red on the, on the Eurozone. And, and these kinds of things make people rightly concerned about their financial future. So these are the kinds of things that we would look at, would say the housing market might call in certain areas because of that kind of a sentiment. So with that in mind, if someone's thinking about selling a house, is now the time to do it? Okay. It depends on where they live, what their individual circumstances are, the reasons that they need to move. So for some people, now has to be the right time because of their life circumstances, whether or not that's trying to move into a different area to get kids into a different school catchment, mm -hmm. whether or not it's, it's due to displacement, due to relocation of, of work or, or divorce, perhaps. So there are people, the three Ds, we call them, death, divorce, displace, displacement, that will always have to move whatever the time Actually, is. Actually, mortgages could be tougher now because of the new criteria. Because of the mortgage market review in April. So I think the, the stats, as I would read them, just looking at the Home Track report in, in, in isolation, what this report tells me is that if we look at the cities, the 20 cities listed, they're university cities. And if we think about the, the toughness that people are facing in terms of getting a mortgage, what this tells me is investors are investing in buy-to-let property right. in those areas because they're university towns. And if we look at the bigger picture, which is nearly 5 million people in private rented in this country at the moment, then where, where's the, the demand is in private rented and you're seeing that picture. Oh, there we go. Really Thanks interesting very much. stuff. Yeah. There you go, Louisa. Good to see you as ever. Thanks for coming Thank in. Thank you. Well, it's like any business. You need to do your research and be prepared. Okay. And the history is littered with landlords that have lost money because they went into it without thinking it through properly. Well, now, obviously, mortgage practices have changed then because of the mortgage market review. So, whereas you could borrow an obscene amount of money without really having the capital to back it up a few years ago, you can't anymore, which is probably a good thing because it means that it's protecting people. So, all of that, if you do decide, having looked at the other options, that getting into property is for you, then as with anything else, if you were starting a business, write yourself a business plan. Understand the market that you're looking to buy in. Search it to death, speak to local agents because they've got their finger on the pulse and they really understand the demand in that area. Understand what the costs might be because it's not just your mortgage. Obviously, you need to think about maintenance costs, insurance, voids, which is when your tenant um, or when your property is empty for a while or if your tenant doesn't pay for any reason. Um, so it's really important to factor that in so you've got a buffer, so you've got a fighting fund. Mm. You know, I've been a landlord myself and things happen. And really, if you want to make the best out of this, you've got to be prepared for any eventuality. How Just because you're renting it doesn't mean to say you don't have to be security conscious because you need to think about things like contents and personal insurance. So just have a look at the front door, Yale locks, double locks, that kind of thing. 
window locks. So, as I say, you're going to be in the property for a while. Make sure that you and your possessions are safe. Are safe. Yeah, right. actually Electric. own. The, the, the real way that people live there is to rent much the same as in France. And there's no social stigma about long-term renting in most of Europe. This really is something that we as a nation are very much, we must own our own home. But here now, as somebody that works in property, I'm confident to say Buying is not the best option for everybody at, okay. the, at a certain point in their life. Okay. I'm 25 years old, um, I'm in a really great situation, like I'm saving quite a bit of money a month, um, living at home with my parents. Looking to buy a, um, buy a house in the next two years, but I'm just so confused as to where to start. Do I go to the bank first? Do I look at a house first? And, you know, I suppose I'm just a bit new to it, really. I don't really know where to start. I think, Sharon, first of all, hello. Mm -hmm. hello. And, um... I think it's brilliant that you're actually planning your future and I, I really wish that more young people would listen to the example that you are, which is you're thinking forward. So to give you a little bit of a, a steer, save really hard for the next couple of years, get your deposit together. Make sure that you're financially secure so you've got good long-term secure employment prospects when you get to the point that you, that you want to buy and at that point take yourself off Go and find yourself some professional financial services advice. So what you're looking for is a mortgage broker that can look at every mortgage product in the market. So that means they can find a mortgage that will really suit your situation. Once you know how much you can afford, then that's the exciting bit. You can go house shopping. Where do you find the mortgage broker? Um, Pretty much on the internet these days, if you put in independent financial advice, always make sure that you're looking for somebody that is qualified. The good news is, quality of estate agency in the UK is actually pretty good. You yeah. hear the odd few horror stories, but generally they're all, they're all OK. Um, however, to get the best of the bunch, what you need to look for is a member of the National Association of Estate Agents. Um, they will be accredited, and there are accredited members up and down the country, or a member of the RICS, that's the Royal Institution of Chartered Surveyors. Now, with the NAEA, there are anybody can be a member providing they pass the qualifying criteria, they take their exams, and they sign up to a code of conduct. Right. Now, so you've got the big chains across the country, so people like Knight Frank, like Savills, like Foxtons, new entrants like Purple Bricks, but you've also got independence, so you don't have to be a big estate agent to be a member. Okay. But you do have to qualify for the criteria and sit your exams. What this is, is a mark of excellence. Big thing, and I'll just cover it quickly, is chancery repair liability. Now this dates back to medieval times when the parishes gave people land to build on. What it means in modern times now is that you could be responsible for the upkeep of the church roof. Really? And that can run into hundreds of thousands of pounds. Just make sure when you are, if you are looking at a property like this in a beautiful village with a church, your solicitor will do a check called a chancery liability search to make sure that your property isn't liable. If it is, you buy a piece of insurance called chancery liability insurance that covers you in the event you have to pay for and the roof. It. See, I think there's five main questions that you should ask. It's your right to ask these questions because they will affect the offer that you put forward. Yeah. So you really need to understand the circumstances. First of all, is the property going to be offered with vacant possession or is there going to be a chain? Chain's complicated, vacant possession, lovely smooth, quick, okay. quick transaction. Next thing, think very carefully, will the vendor withdraw the property from the market? You don't want other people looking at it after you've had your offer accepted yep. and you're racking up legal fees. So okay. you need to ask, will you take the property off the market? Or, so they must declare if there have been any disputes with neighbours. If they withhold that information or give you incorrect information, you can sue the vendor at a later date if it becomes a problem. So ask the question, ask the agent to email you the answer, it will also come up in your solicitor's questions, but do ask before you spend too much money. So basically, these are new proposals to limit the amounts that lenders can lend to people who want mortgages. Yeah. So at the moment, if I were to apply for a mortgage today, it's quite likely that I and many other people could borrow up to five times their income. Mm -hmm. Now, that could put some people in a bit of a financial pickle, and obviously what we don't want to do is go back to the times of irresponsible lending. Now isn't that confusing? If you're sat in Swansea, your house, I'm pretty confident, probably wouldn't have been going up at £1,300 a week. So the media are confusing and mm. in some respects quite scaring people. And I think it's a really important point that people understand that house prices vary all across the country. It's a very mixed picture now. And there isn't a national housing market anymore. No. And the headlines tend to concentrate very much on London and the South East. 
but there's a bigger country. I was so excited about this this morning. <laughs> um, so basically, just to sort of show, it's a national picture. So the same way as weather, you only get a heat wave all across the country. Mm -hmm. Property prices are the same. So if we think about hotspots at the moment, we know about London. We know about that. But Surrey, down there, that's getting quite warm. Now, what I'm going to show you, these aren't necessarily the most expensive places in the, the country to But they're live, having a little boom. But they're seeing the, either the greatest growth mm. or the least increases. This might surprise you. Now, I've got to get my geography right. About there. North Bruce Wales. Finn, Denbyshire. So they've actually seen over 11% increases on average over a year. You worked on the fact that the ONS, Office of National Statistics, say 250,000. Look at what you can get what for your money. Yeah, and gosh. these are beautiful aspirational properties. I mean, I'd live in any of them. Yeah, they're lovely. So, right. Thank you very thank much. You.